and welcome to instructor Alison tutorials in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate your CGPA and that this video is specifically for all the students who must have graduated whether in ND level or HND in polytechnics so um the essential thing i want you to know about this is that the national board of technical or national board for technical education national board for technical education Also, in short form, you can call them or call it MBTE. What is this National Board for Technical Education? This body oversees, regulates, supervises, or supervises all the activities in a polytechnic, monotechnic. Even secondary, all these are technical schools, technical institutions. That's how we put it. So this body regulates and also supervises and check into all the activities that happens within these polytechnics, monotechnics, and also secondary uh, technical schools. All right. So in the year 2015 against 2016 academic section, they have reviewed the new polytechnic grading system. Some polytechnics have already started using this grading system. Some may have not started using. So you have to check if your school is using this uh, grading system. That means this video is for you. Okay, I will centralize or pay attention to students in Federal Polytechnic, Nekede, in Oweri, which is why I indicate this FPNO, Federal Polytechnic Nekede Oweri, which was my alma mater. And then they have reviewed, the rector just announces the uh, implementation of this uh, polytechnic grading uh, system in the year 2019 against 2020 academic section. So if you're currently a student there or you just you're just a graduant, uh, this video is for you. All right. So I've listed the classes of people. And if even if you're not in this school, you're also in polytechnics. The video is for you. So pay much attention as I'm going to teach you how to calculate your CGPA, which is cumulative, uh, we call it cumulative grade point average. So I'll teach you how to calculate this without you having to visit the exams and records. So when you write your first semester exam, second semester, ND1, ND2, or HND1, HND2, each of the semesters should be able to know how to do the calculation by yourself. So stay tuned. If you've not subscribed to my channel, this is a better opportunity. Just pause the video and then click on subscribe. Like the video also and share to your colleagues. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to start with is this. You can see how I have alighted it. This is the mark range. This is the grade. This is the point. So if you have written your exams, before, uh, before you engage in writing exams, you would have done some sort of assignment. You have also report your practicals as if you're in the sciences. You're not in the sciences. Maybe you're in the school of business and um, uh, which other school you are or faculty, depending on how you call it in your school. If you have done all of those necessary things with assignment and the tests, everything sum up together with the exams. If they calculate all and your score falls within 75 to 100, that means your grade point is A. And A means 4.00. And then if after you must have done all of that and write and must have written your exams and what you score falls within the range of 70 to 74 then your grade will be AB and then AB stands for the point for AB is 3.50 
this is not 3.50 this is 3.50 meaning you just have 3.5 that's what it means after decimal point every of the numbers you have at the right is called singly or single by single all right okay so that process follows still if you have 40 below or maybe you have 40 you you uh, arrive at this point grade e and it is 2.00 but you have 39 you have 39 after all the exercise that is f from 39 sorry from yeah from 39 down to zero that is f which means you fail the course and when you fail it you have to register it to rewrite it and that's what they call carryover all right so before in polytechnic cd is carryover this is where the carryover starts where you have 39 down and now they have reviewed it and this is the current one so you have to follow this and you have to learn it that is the reason i do this video or i'm doing this video for you all right so look at it after you must have gotten this you will ask the question how do you arrive at this point this cgpa because the one you have each of the semester is what you call gp or some person can call it or you can call it gpa which is great point, great point average. That means if in my first semester, ND1, if I'm in ND program, national diploma, that's the meaning of ND. For those of you who are not in polytechnics, also watching this video, HND stands for higher national diploma. So in my first, let's say I'm in national diploma, first semester, my GP is 2.00. And second semester, the one I have is, let's say, 3.00. And that is for ND1. ND1, first and second semester. The way you would have gone for your full mosaic and your back for ND2, first semester, I then have, uh, let's say, 3.15. And then ND2, second semester, I have 3.50. These are my GP in each of the semester. So for me to know the total of this GP, for me to know the total GP I have in my ND1 and ND2, that is for my ND, what I graduate with or what I'm going to graduate with, this is what you're going to do. You're going to sum up the first semester and the one, the first, second semester and the one, the first semester and the two, second semester and the two. By the time you sum up all these things together, let's say while summing up this, or when you sum up this, yeah, we have five, yeah, we have uh, eight, and then we have here to be 11, 11, and this 11 point, let's say 11 point. Um, six five i'm making an approximate grade because of time so this is the total i have you have to divide it by four what does this four mean it means you have four semester in each level or in each yeah we have four semester in each level let's say in, in your nd level you have four semester hnd level so if i'm doing for nd is applicable for hnd i don't have to do it separately all right so if i have all of this for each of the semester i will add it up and then divide it by four, meaning four semester. So if I divide this, let's be quick about that. If I have 11.65 divided by four, the result I will have here is 2.9, 2.91. So that means my CGPA, my CGPA is now 2.91. Even if we have 2.99, that's the CGPA. In this case, we don't do approximation. They yeah, say because I have 2.99, so my CGPA is approximately 3.00. No, we don't accept that. We don't do it. So, which is why it is very expedient. You take everything you're doing seriously. If it is assignment, you submit to yours. If it is textbook, you purchase if it is necessary. Or uh, if it is compulsory in your school. And if it is uh, test, practical, if you're in the sciences, make sure you do all of that. It's very important. So the last thing I'm going to teach us in this video, having explained this. Okay, if by the time you have this particular one, 2.99, check the grade it falls within. 2.50 to 2.99 is lower credit. 
so you're going to graduate or your result is going to be written lower credit that means you graduated with lower credit if it falls if the total cgpa falls within 2.00 to 2.49 it means you just have pass all right but if it falls within 3.50 and above maybe 3.50 4.00 3.70 3.80 that is distinction in the university they call it first class i'm going to do another video that is for the university student but this is strictly for polytechnic student all right so having understood this how are you going to calculate each of your semester results each semester that is the last part of this video each semester you will need to know what we call the credit unit or the credit load the credit load or you can call it credit units that's the meaning of cl or cu depending on the one that your course uh supervisor may use on the slip so we usually have each course usually have its credit unit let's say i will select courses at random you have gns gns 101 and this course has uh, maybe two credit units we have another one uh, i'm using the code well you can use any i can use it at random let's say we have morphology morphology and this has three credit units the next one let's say you have magnus magnus three credit units. most of the physics courses if i'm to use uh, the science lane uh heat energy each energy let's say this is three credit units uh let that's another course in the polytechnics some polytechnics they call it urop urban and regional planning either to do it first semester or second semester 400 level or any one student maybe this one is one credit unit and then you have cell biology cell biology and this may be let's say two units okay let's stop here because of time some in their first semester may do up to 11 courses some may do up to 13 courses depending on the number of courses you are doing so what the first thing i will want you to do is if you're in nd, ND or hnd the first thing you do is that all the courses you are offering for that semester make sure you add up all the credit units you are doing and if you add up all these credit units you're doing let's say i'm doing offering one two three four five six six courses and these are the credit units so we have two plus this five eight eleven twelve fourteen that means the total of this is fourteen it's very important look at how i'm going to use it so let's say after your exams what you score for this gns the total you have is b you have b here and then for this morphology you score bc and for mechanics of e and then for heat energy let's say you have d and it's not your portion all right it's not your portion but i have to use it too because some persons obviously may fall in within this but that's not what i'm wishing you i wish you have a or true all right so let's say you have b again for this urop and then you have c for cell biology so these are the grades you saw it's simple you can calculate it if only you can be able to remember all this b stands for what 3.25 so what i expect that you do is to multiply for the first one b is 3.25 3.25 multiplies by two because it is two credit units for that first one if you multiply this it will give you a result okay let's be quick about that if I have 3.25 multiplied by 2, the result will be 6.5. The same process should be done for each and every one of these. Let's say this mechanism is 3 credit units. And because it is, three, look at it, 4.0, 3 credit units. That means 3 times 4. That will be 12. For the second, uh, for mechanism, we have 12. 12. You can see that whenever you have higher credit units, some department may have credit unit that is up to six credit units 
or maybe you're doing a project in your ND2 or HND2, you should be targeting, if that pro uh, project is six credits in it, target to make sure you have key because it will boost your GP, all right? And you just imagine if you have A in six credit unit, that's six. That six credit unit, that six credit unit multiplied by four. That means you're having 24. That's very high. But if in six credit unit, you're having something like D or you're having C, multiply that six by two, two point D, you're having 12 point something or 13 approximately. There about, you can see what, how these things works. So by the time you use two to multiply by each of these grading points you've gotten and you multiply everything, make sure you add all of them together. Let's say all the results I have here, by the time I do the multiplication, everything gives me 107. All right. This 107 is going to, you're going to use this to divide by the total credit unit. Of course, all these things I told you, they mean credit load or credit unit. It divide all by 14. And when you divide everything by 14, if, let's try it, if I have 107 divided by 14, divide by 14, and I am having, of course, this is a random stuff, I'm having 7.64, 7 it means that for that semester, uh, what you score is this your C or not CGP, your GP, yeah, your GP for that semester is 7.64. All right, I hope that is clear. So, if you have some sort of question you want to also ask about this, or there is a part that is not clear, you can make use of my the comment section in this video. Just make sure you drop your question there and I will reply to you as soon as I receive it. And if you want to get more further um, questions about it too, and you want to reach me, you check the description, you can contact me there, all right, on my social media uh, platform. So that is all for this video. I will wish that you follow the subscribe link in the description and subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so that by the time I drop any vital information, regarding your school or your your grading system or about the courses you're doing that is if you're still in school then you should also benefit from that so thank you very much for watching